on this computer. Okay, hey everybody. Uh, uh, this is Matt uh, Wemgadge uh, coming to you on the Space, Space Basement Collective channel. Um, no edits, no, no takes, just kind of messing around. We've got Jacob John here, uh, Lord Open back with us uh, to kind of follow up on what we've been doing um, through the summer. We are now going through, um, we're solidly into SB5, uh, Space Basement 5, um, Social B5, uh, Space Bus, um, and uh, some pretty good, pretty good things that kind of come into you twice a day on this YouTube channel that nobody watches. <laughs> Welcome, John. Thank you. Uh, I watch it, Matt. Uh, <laughs> I'm tuning in pretty regular. <laughs> That's good to hear. I can't say that I'm catching every episode, but I'm watching most of them. Uh, good deal. Good deal. Um, oh, yeah. I, well, we're at the beginning, right? I just want to, yeah. like, I have made some notes based on our previous discussion, mm -hmm. some corrections and or clarifications. Yes. Early, like in the beginning of the conversation, I don't, we were talking about Psychosomatic Climax Machine and Daryl Mason came up. Yep. And I think I made it sound like he went under the name of Psychosomatic Climax Machine by himself for a while at some point, which is not true. I wasn't talking about Daryl, I was talking about Ann Silikowski at the time. Right. Right. Just wait so you clear that up. Before yeah. she turned her, changed her name to Matchsticks and the, uh, sorry, building castles out of Matchsticks and and now she's going as Anne, which is cool. She's got a YouTube channel on here. I'll link to it. Um, and she's from what I've seen recently. I'm not sure if you've seen. She's doing some pedal reviews and she's doing a lot of unmusic herself. A lot of droney, you know, um, plug in the. Um, uh, uh, plug in the, the Fender Jazzmaster and then just turn the pedal on and then listen to the loop. Uh, nice. So that's been pr pretty neat. It's really neat what she does there. Uh, um, yeah, so that's a good clarification right off the bat there. Yeah, and then uh, I mentioned that I'd come up with the Lord Open name while playing uh, Legend of Zelda. But uh, I, think it, I think I said it was Link from the Past or something, which is not the case. It was Ocarina of Time. Ah, well, I'm, you know, that I'm glad you mentioned it because there were so many, so many posts in the comments about that. Last <laughs> oh, time. Everyone's just really concerned. It doesn't yeah. make sense. No, that's because it yeah. wasn't that one. It was Ocarina the, of Time. The, the hate mail I got was just incredible. I know. Like, like, so thank you for that. clarifying that. <laughs> uh, those are, yeah. Oh, uh, you mentioned your drinking. Yeah. I just want to let you know that I never considered your drinking to be a problem. At well, least thank you. From where I was standing or any of the times that we hung out together, you seemed just fine to me. Well, the benefits of being a girl drink drunk, I guess. I was always pretty, <laughs> always pretty fun to be around, but it was really my own life that I was wreaking havoc with. But, but I do appreciate that very much. Thank you. And there was another point where we were talking about podcasts and stuff. And I was, I was talking about not, like not being interested in doing a music podcast. Yeah. And then like within the next five minutes, I'm talking about doing some kind of music podcast. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Yes, I, I did say that. And I, I do feel both of those things all at the same time. I did a, well, the one radio show I did, the Professor Walks to Work one, mm -hmm. It was only like 10 episodes or something, but it was kind of like a podcast that was just on the radio. Yeah. Like I pre-produced the whole thing. I showed up, I popped a CD in the player and let it rip for half an hour. Mm -hmm. Like it was, or maybe I guess it's an hour. Anyway, I don't remember, but it was completely pre-produced. It was very, you know what I mean? It was like putting a yep. podcast on the radio. And then I did another podcast called The Low Cast got through 40 some odd episodes of that before I gave up. Mm -hmm. um, that was also like a music podcast where I play like some songs I liked and then some of the recordings. 
Right. And that kind of that that's good because it kind of brings us back to that like. So yeah, I would. You were do doing that. it. You were doing it before it was a thing. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, I guess that's. A, you know, take that, Danko Jones. <laughs> yeah, I was doing it a long time ago, and then. Uh, but I, I guess my point is, I wouldn't really want to do something like that again. Mm -hmm. However, the thing that I mentioned about going back into the archives, listening to a couple of things, getting some people together to talk about it, that does interest me. And it seems like it'd be, again, it's conversations, right? It's not just a music thing. Yeah. If one guy presenting a bunch of songs to you is, uh, I, I guess there's, a place for that and people interested in it, but it's just uh, not what I'm interested in right now. I think yeah. the conversation thing is where it's at. And I think it's more interesting for people. And I think it's, and again, maybe it's how old I am now, but it's, it's a large part of what I'm consuming, yep. you know, is recorded conversations and it just, it just makes sense to me right now doing that kind of thing. Okay. And then, yeah, that was about it. And then the only other thing I noted is that we kind of talked a little bit about Year of the Rat, but we never really got into the secret origins of it very much. Yeah. And I think that's probably a good place to start before we go into, you know, um, project number, whatever it was, <laughs> SP5, um, before we get into SP5. Um, but I noticed actually in listening, SP5 there wasn't a clear delineation in the room because we still had EOTR radio callouts through most of that summer, in addition to SB5 callouts. So it was yeah. like, welcome to the space basement, EOTR one in the house. And there's a lot of that where there was still like a lot of overlap after, uh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know, there was even like, I put out some EOTR stuff after the SP5 thing. Yep. Um, yeah, that's funny. I I did go through some of the old archive stuff, and the very last thing I posted, mm -hmm. it's a jam that just it was just Tom came over to my house, and me and him hung out for a couple hours. Nice. And it's so funny that that's the last thing I posted because I listened to it, and I'm like, it's. It's very good. At least it's it's what I like. And for is that the <laughs> lemonade lem, living lemonade living room session? That one's good. That, that was so uh, that's not that one. It's a different one. Breeze. Oh, okay. Of course. And that's yeah. also very good. But there's one that's just me and Tom that we made in my living room. And uh, man, oh man, it, I listened to it. And I'm like. Oh, so this was, the, I guess I'm, it makes sense that this would be the last one because I feel like after all those years of trying, finally got it right. Yeah. And you've got, you know, two of the founders doing the thing. So it's, so it's that one. I rec It's called uh, Electro Alchemical Bromance. Ah. And it's under EOTR. So that's good. Um, Oh yeah, we were talking about SB5. <sighs> when did we change the name? Do you remember? It was like, I'm imagining it'd be. I like remember there was, I remember there was, yeah. I mean, there was some discussion about um, changing the name after it moved to, the, to Dan's place because it was new and different. And um, so that happened. Um, yeah, and it, well, it made sense. It was different. Like it really did change depending on the venue. Yeah. Like, cause you combine like a new venue with like the rotating cast of characters and uh, different locations they all had the, like a kind of specific vibe like there were some weird ones um did you play with us at all when reg was there 
I don't remember. Well, did you come out to the barn in the back? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. actually I was on about three of those before it moved to the basement in around before the naming. I actually, I, I, I know because it was stuff that, um, it was stuff that uh, Jeffrey had captured. And that was before okay. I quit drinking the first time. And uh, then I was sober when I started going to your basement. And then, um, and then by the time I got to my house, I was drinking again, which is funny. That's how I, my life is all in those sections. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I went to, I want to say I went to three sessions in the barn. Um, so that Reg guy would have been around. Like we did a couple of, like we did two or three at his house. I think so I went like, to that house once. And then there was another place that was sort of in the same neighborhood. I don't remember what that guy's name was. Yeah, I remember that's when, that was when Jeff was kind of shopping around a location for it, wasn't it? Yeah, because, so I guess, I guess we're, are we talking about this, like the early history of Ear the Rat? I guess that's what we're on right now is the early history of Year of the Rat and getting to, and I guess what we're really talking about is SB1 and 2, whatever those were. Because you were, your basement was SB3, and then Jen's was 4. No, I'm wrong. Mine's, mine's 4, Dan's was 5, yours was 2, Jen's was 3. So what was base basement 1? Carl's. Carl's. That's right. And it was Carl's that I was at Carl's house a couple times. Yeah. So yeah, because I remember that. Yes. There was and so then the, the thing, barn in the middle the is it was supposed to be like it was something Jeffrey set up with some guy. I forget his name everyone else that played that night that's terrible they were good though and they're a local band and the guy is like like they're good you know they know what they're doing anyway uh, i don't know how jeffrey knew them or how he managed to get like we'll find out in the comments it's okay we're gonna find out in the comments yeah. but, right i don't know how we got that like uh like i say they these bands were kind of practiced and like playing like actual music and it wasn't quite the cacophony noise fest. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, but we were on the bill and then, uh, but Bill Mason was supposed to come out that night. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I called them and I'm like, Hey man, like, uh, are you driving? Cause if you are like, can I get a ride and then I can bring like more stuff with me? Mm -hmm. He got all mad because he thought like that's why we invited him out to the show. So he would drive. <laughs> like, well, it's like if you can't drive me, that's okay. I just I'm gonna pack different stuff depending on how I'm getting there. Right. You know? uh, so he ended up not showing up that night. And I think that's really how it went from the, like not only the ear of the rat start, but Billy's Masonic Tavern kind of ended at that That's point. The, that was the first name change, if you will, like the one project becoming the other. Yeah, because like, you know, Bill bailed and it was just like, I uh, mean, him hadn't been getting along great anyway. But it, it was like, it's that just the same thing with Billy all the time where he's like, he's all mad because I'd done something. Or I don't know, he figured out my secret intentions. And I'm like, that's not how I feel or mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. So like that's that's kind of frustrating, right? When someone's just mad at you and they're making up like the reasons why they are. Absolutely. It's not uh it's not easy to deal with. And like that's what are you gonna do? Sure. Apologize? It's like you <laughs> like you can't like, win that way. You end up sounding like you're you end up sounding like you're gaslighting when you do. I'm sorry you yeah. feel like that. Or I'm sorry you feel that way. Oh that's even worse. What are you saying? 
you don't want to go there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or yeah, I mean, you just think like, can I tell you how I thought about it? And it's like, well, you're just making excuses. It's like, yeah, it's, you can't win. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that was pretty much, you know, that would have, we would have, anyway, that's, that was kind of the end of the BMT days. Right. Beginning year of the rat. It was the year of the rat, right? So Jeffrey came up with that corny name. Yep. And, yeah, and I think like shortly around the same time, there was the whole schizotech thing as well, um, and that was I the other part he of was it. Supposed to come out too. Yeah, and that's where that's what that's where Jeffrey's Jeff what Jeffrey was talking about in his his um his interview with me. So there's the two things simultaneously happening uh, at um, L3. I want to say it was maybe it was at L3. Yeah. Yeah. That show is online. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So, because. Yeah, Chandra showed up. She recorded it. Okay. Um, so it's like. So you know, I could probably a, find that on the effervescence page somewhere. If it's not on hers, it's on, on the. Year of the Rat page, maybe. Okay. Or my page i don't remember should say effervescent i'm not referring to some 80s or some 90s uh emo band um, f r f r vescent videos here we go uploads uh, i'm looking now looking i it was around the same time too i did they uh, Wade knew a guy, and they had like a basement that was out behind like St. Paul Street. Yes, I remember that. It was that like was three floors place. down. It it was in the bot. It was like the third basement below a cafe, that was at the time a cafe or something like that. And it was like, <laughs> and then it became a clothing store or something. I don't even remember the name of it, but I I know that around that time, um, it was like one of the last locations of one of the poetry groups, but I'd already kind of stopped doing that sort of thing at that point. But yeah, was, I do, I do recall that practice space. It was kind of a cool space. It's just a concrete box really. But. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we're talking about the same one. But it sounded nice and you know, no amenities, but yeah, no modern cons. You could get in there, you could play. It was okay. Um, and then, Yeah, that was like it was. It's weird that we started as like on a stage with that act. Yeah, because it really wasn't. That really wasn't what it was about. We didn't take it on the road like well on the road. No, I know, and that's the thing we kind of talked about before. I mean, it's a uniquely Ontario thing. This tradition of open stages that that we were a part of. I mean, it's not like normally. I've had to explain it to other people that have no idea what I'm talking about with the closest analogy are like when you've got a guy who runs an open mic and he has his acoustic guitar and he says, why don't you come up and grab that tambourine? You know, <laughs> but it's, but it was in much, much more than just that. <laughs> yeah. And well, that's the other thing though. It's like, it, you're the rat wasn't, we were never, it wasn't really open mics that we showed up at. It was mostly festival stuff. Right. Like, uh, well, I guess the L3 show was, and it was something else. But then the next time Ear of the Rat performed, like, on a stage, it was at, like, a pre-scene scene. scene. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, like, it wasn't scene, but they called it some kind of pre-scene party. And it was, like, a day-long showcase yeah. and then number three was the in the soil that i participated in that's right those are the three of them yeah yeah in the soil giant spectacle in the soil kickoff event what was it was that city lights was the pre-scene party right pre 
scene party is also available online. Uh, and I don't know if there's video of, uh, I feel like in the soil, there must have been some video footage of it, but uh, yeah, the sure in the soil, there is video. Um, Effervescent has video footage on her page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, thought uh, I just found. Yep. Uh, so after L three, which went well, I mean, I, we had fun. Um, You know, putting up like the video of that too. I mean, there was, I was doing a lot of making little short videos at the time. Mm -hmm. So making Ear of the Rat videos like that, like it, that was sort of something that was part of it from the beginning. Right. So it wasn't just me, like uh, Jeffrey made a couple. I mean, Dave made a bunch that are on like the Facebook page. Yep. Like Chandra's got her YouTube thing, right? So there's like yep. a lot of there's a lot of little short videos that came out of that those sessions. Uh, after L three, we started jamming at the guns backyard, the barn there. Mm -hmm. Yep. At some point, their dad was like a Shriner or a Mason or something, so they. You know, like all the shrine buggies, like the yeah. go carts, they got stored in that garage. Oh, and that's why you moved to the basement originally. Yeah, well, that was the thing. Like, I've been oh. going over there and jamming, and we were having jams in the backyard there. Yeah. And it was. Oh, because this would have still been when Greg was downstairs and Jared was upstairs before you took over Greg's old apartment. That's right. Right. That's yeah, I went over. I, I, I drank with Greg and Jared a couple times over there, over the years. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how I knew he was going, right? And that's yeah. why I ended up getting the apartment because right. I went through the jam, and yeah. I was like, oh, "This is going to be great. I'm going to hang out here with jam in the back." Landlord's a friend of mine. Be awesome. Yeah. After about a month, they like filled the place up with like Shriner cards, and it was, you know. The barn was no longer available. Crying out loud! That's and that's how I started uh, jamming over at Carl's place. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I think that. I think that's right. Yeah, and just be before the Carl sessions, I know there are there are like like I said, there's one video of a night where I showed up with my PV Predator and my Classic 30, that I know, um, and I remember I was living across the street at the time. And uh, you no, know, I think I'm messing up the timeline. Yeah, and and Jeff had invited me over for that. I think we ended up jamming at Carl's not because of. Not because of the Shriner cars, but but some other reason. Because Jared didn't want to like play with Tom. There was a big split. Oh yes. <clears throat> so like there and it, there were very clearly two separate ideas of what was what we were trying to do. Yep. Like in the early days, because I think Greg and Jeffrey got along fine. Man, I, well, I, I've talked about this before as well. I mean, I, I, and it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a, a good thing or a bad thing, but I think Jared's really, Jared really was focusing more on having it be more like a, a, a fish slash Grateful Dead style jam where there are covers interspersed in there, and but you riff on the covers where you know let's 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 riff on this song and then you pay, play a 20 minute version of of sure. a, of a song and that's really what he wanted to do which is legitimate jamming but it's different than what Tom wanted to do which is more you know DIY metal DIY punk yeah now cuz now I'm a little confused about the timeline but I know there was <laughs> okay. a time we were jamming at Carl's and 
there was a jam going on at Jared's, right? Okay. At the same time. But Jared played at Carl's a bunch. So yeah, so it wasn't like it wasn't like at that time that it it was still mingling. It wasn't like at that time that there was like this. <laughs> you know, and it's possible that the cars came in, and we started playing at Carl's, like all of us, mm -hmm. and then, and then I think that kind of makes sense, because I think it was sort of around. Because then there's a time when Carl starts like being we can't use his basement anymore right so we're and that was when sp1 had to that's when sp1 went away well and i'm wondering if when we were looking i'm trying to figure out when we were looking for places to jam was did we start out at carl's and then carl's fell apart or were we looking for places to jam and then we ended up going to carl's because we couldn't jam with the other guys mm. that is what happened um, the, there was some new guy whose name I don't remember who went to his house and there was now sort of a critical mass of people that wanted to, like you said uh, well, I talked about it with Jared and we basically mm -hmm. like what I want to do is I want to like, you know take it a little more seriously, practice songs, and eventually we'll go out and we'll play bars yeah. and make a little bit of money. Yeah. Do songs at a bar. And I was like, yeah, that's not what I want to do. So yeah. The thing is, not only wasn't it what I want to do, but I knew it wasn't going to happen anyway, even if that's what they said they were going to do. Because he's been saying he's going to do that for like 10 years beforehand, right? Like, and it never, it, you know, they just show up and. I'm going on tour as soon as my band gets signed. Yeah. You know, oh, we'll start practicing next week. I don't know. It's just. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. you. got other stuff to do, right? Like, it's fun to play, but you don't necessarily. It's another thing if it's your job. Yep. You got to take it a whole different kind of seriously. And that's not what I was looking to do. Um, so that was the big split, right? Like, right. Where there were people that wanted to take it more serious and want to learn songs. And then there was, and then the other thing was that, like, you know, Tom was in, I'm not going to say he wasn't a musician because he totally is, but just not like what they wanted to do. You know? Yeah. I mean, like, and this is the thing is not being classically trained. I mean, like, you know, Tom to me, I mean, it's like, and I've talked about this before, you know, Velvet Underground, The Fall, you know, Psychic TV, you know, unmusic, music that is just like, even in the case of like Velvet Underground, I mean, what was that? That was like, you know, that was Kale and Reed taking pop songs that they had basically written on Tin Pan Alley for real and then turning it into ambient noise for art, you know, very, very explicitly for art, you know, but, and that's the reason why in the case of the Velvets, there, there's so much form there, you know, so. Yeah, but, uh, so they definitely didn't want Tom coming in to do like, because he wasn't going to practice songs, right? Right. That just wasn't going to happen. So, and if that's what you want to do, you don't want Tom there. Yeah. Right. So it just makes sense. So we ended up splitting into two bands. Yep. Uh, and then <clears throat> see, this is the thing where I'm a little confused because I know Greg was at Carl's a lot. Yeah. So I think we were playing at Carl's and then shortly around the time that Carl, like we couldn't use his place anymore, mm -hmm. I think we did start looking for other places. And that's how we ended up at this other guy's house. And that's when the decision to like split came because the, you know, they basically like made a rate. 
the people that I knew and would would talk to at the jam mm -hmm. weren't talking to that guy. Yeah. So all the people that were, they sort of all got invited back to that guy's house. And then there was about half of us that didn't. So it's like, oh. So we ended up finding a new place. I think that's when I put it in my basement. Okay. I believe that's when that decision happened. So, because we couldn't jam at Carl's, we had this other place, but now that fell through. It's like, well, it's not perfect, but let's play in my place. So that leads me to a question, and that's when did Space Basement start becoming a, I know that's something that was one of the call outs early on. Do you, do you have a recollection of when that is? I mean, short I, of us going into EOTR back catalog and listening for it, it like there, 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 it's right there. I think it started when we moved it to my place. Mm -hmm. um, I remember there's the, definitely call outs of the space space uh, as early as when I, you know, started started um, showing up in your basement. Um, space 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 basement. Well, that's what. That's what started first was the space base. Yeah. Like I say, I feel like that would have happened when we moved it to my place. Because I was on a mic more regularly mm -hmm. then. Yeah. I don't feel like I would have sang as much as Carl's. I know we had a mic. Or yeah, you were doing mic. a lot more toasting. A lot more toasting than, than singing. Definitely. Yeah. Um, So I know it started about the space base and that was the, it's like I say, like there's a lot of science, science fiction input into the year of the rap mythology. Mm -hmm. So it was a combination of like ideas from Philip K. Dick's Vallis and Jack Kirby's OMAC, the one man army corps, where there's like a, a mystical technical satellite above earth that aids the heroes of the story and that's sort of what eotr1 was the the space base love that i love that there's all this mythology like it's it's like an actor with you know who has a whole backstory for a character with one line yeah yeah exactly and then after like the space base what's what's your motivation well <sighs> See, when I was five, I was uh, left uh, behind at school and my, my mother never showed up. So when I call for the taxi, it's with a lot of pathos. Yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. Taxi! Well, that's, that's the thing. I mean, as, as much as there's a lot of like people just sort of horsing around and it gets noisy and silly, there yeah. was a lot of like high-minded psycho spiritual intention. oh yeah like like and, and, and like i said i mean i'm i'm making light of it but i'm not making fun of it because I, I i was in on it it was it was definitely performance art i mean i don't you know i've said this before i considered it a radio show um you know when we went to the video it was like um it was totally a uh improvised um you know like in my mind, what it, and I've said this before, what it reminded me of was the overnight, the overnight video broadcasts on TVO where they would just like hand it over to FM for like two hours. And, you know, and, you know, Nash the, Nash the Slash would just be like, just going crazy and, you know, um, doing, did you know doing that his I thing. Jammed with him once? I did not know that. Tell me about that. I was when I was in Psychosomatic Climax Machine. He actually came on our radio show, and uh, the oh, three wow. of us jammed out for an hour or two. Oh, that is so cool! Yeah. Did he did he show up in makeup or just as himself? He just like, came as himself. Up, yeah, it's like you're like I don't recognize you because you're not a, a mummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that was cool. Like, uh, that's awesome. You did some pretty neat stuff when I was on the radio. Yeah. So like I said, it comes from, you know, that, that it's neat because it does come from an honest place within Ontario's music history. 
um, you know, not, not saying that we uh, are, are at that level, but I mean, you know, that idea of what are you going to do? I'm going to improvise for 40 minutes on t TV Ontario because they gave me the time. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That would be fun. I would do that. Maybe. Uh, I can totally find that. Uh, Phasers on stun. Yeah. 1976. No. Not going to play it. I can't play it because it'll just get demonetized or whatever anyway. Night Music. That's the show. Night Music was the show I was thinking of. Okay. Yeah. And Night Music was essentially just handed it over to a musician and they had all these indie at the time they would have been called prog rockers but really they were you know at the vanguard of 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 new wave um and yeah so that's pretty darn cool uh back to your the rant yep we moved to my place right uh yeah then the space basement like i said i was told i started talking about the space base right Mm -hmm. And then I thought it was funny because we were in a basement. So then there was a, a space base, a space basement. Right? So that's where that basically came from. Right. Like, well, we're, there's a space base. And then, so you, now you've got a space base, a space basement, right? And it's that as above, so below kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, That's where that happened. And that jam went on for a while when it was in my basement. It was pretty stable. Like two, a year, two, maybe even three. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I think by far that was the most stable year. And that was also the changing of the guard from. Um, you know, uh, I I brought Dave in the one time, and I think before that it was like a lot more of Osama and uh, some of the other friends from come down from Toronto. Yeah, you're right. It uh, things got a little different after Dave and Merv got involved, because there was a long section there where like there was a pretty solid core, where like you, Merv, Dave, Jeff, yeah. Tom, me. Chandra, Jen, everyone was there like almost every week, like a solid right. like eight to ten people. Yep. Which I they, think that was had, the final year and a half at your place. Actually, is probably what that was. And right. and, uh, and and about six months of that was on the air, like was on live to air rather, live to video. That's right. That's when that started too, which was I think. I don't know. It, it certainly added an element of something to the experience. Like one of the fun things I remember when we were doing it in my basement, mm -hmm. right, was that I put it on the TV upstairs. Right. So people who weren't jamming could hang out in the living room and like watch what was going on. Yep. So, I mean, I don't know, just like dumb stuff like that. It was like extra fun. Yeah, that was definitely a cool factor of it because, it, and now actually, I think that's probably when it first started to kind of extend into kind of party mode. <laughs> yeah, well, there was definitely a there was reason to get out of the room with the camera. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Like for partying, so like. People would spend more time sometimes in the the because it was before the legalization that <laughs> yeah there's that too um, yeah I, I to me that was always like one of the best parts of the jam was like playing and then mm -hmm. you just stop playing but the song's still going yep you can go away go have a cigarette. You know, you spend 15, 20 minutes talking to people outside and then you come back in 
Yep. Still, music's still going. Yep. And you just like hop back into it. Yeah, you know, same here. I definitely like, like a merry go round that you're allowed to hop on and hop off on whenever you wanted. Yep. I don't know. That was. That was a lot cool. of the nights when Tom was there, it would be like, in particular, I mean, uh, Time of the Signs, Organism, I've been going through that. This is more of the uh, SP5 stuff, but, you know, it's like Tom from, it's Tom floor, end to end. Just do, 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 right through. And uh, wow. it just holds it all down, glues it all together. It, I, he would, he didn't stop. He just didn't stop, yeah. <laughs> I think that Tom, Tom doesn't smoke cigarettes, I don't think. No, he does not. No. So that was the thing, right? He was like one of the people that never left. Yeah. Yeah, and he was always one of the first to show up and he. Yeah, exactly. He would set up at the time he was playing bass before he uh, uh, took over the chaos pad, which I've talked about before. He, he, he's been using your chaos pad. I think it's yours, but he's been using the chaos. No, pad. he got his own. Yeah, it's his own. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. But um, yeah, he's been bringing Did that. Download that app. I got it on. I got it on my iPad. I got it on my phone. I got chaos pads all over the place. Although, actually, um, uh, man, I paid three hundred dollars for that thing. I know, right? <laughs> um, Frank actually got his chaos pad back from his friends. He's got one of the big ones. Oh yeah. We played around with that last week. Um, so that was fun. I don't have anything a, finished, but that the effects pad. Yeah, he's got the effects pad, and what we did was we took the five hundred five and ran it through. And as you know, the five hundred five is basically a baby six hundred six, so it's, you know, yeah. the effects it's pad got is, those really nice rad. sounds. But I, I was but it was it. neat because he was treating it, and we were getting like totally like absolute fat Beastie Boys beats out of it. It was perfect, just like. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious so um that's probably going to be new sublingual stuff i don't even know if we're going to call ourselves sublingual um because there's like five other bands with that name but you know we were doing it in 1999 so i don't know maybe but but yeah so i don't know there's about 15 15 tracks that we laid down maybe we'll weed that out you know that's going to get pared down to four or five um uh, but yeah, right now it's like drum machine, chaos pad, and this Roland. That's what's on it so far. So fun. I got to add some guitars. I, I, I put a little bit of guitar because I was like, I was running everything through that board and we were doing stuff simultaneous. But then the thing is with using the 505, your flow gets stopped because he's like, it's not even as simple as say, like an Electribe Red, you know, you can at least stop and like just punch in stuff right away because it's got the, you know, the 16 um, uh, measures. Uh, the 505, it's like everything you've got to shift, function, push the button, shift, function, push the button. So it really is a lot just to get it programmed up to where you want the patterns to be if you're not going to use the presets. And so what ended up happening was we, um, we have a lot of, no, no, stop, stop recording. <laughs> and then we did it again. So, but it was fun. And you came over like two weeks ago. So that was good. I'm looking cool. forward to that. Maybe I'll make something out of that. Um, and I got to get him back and, you know, I don't know, we'll do some vocals or something. I don't know. We're going to do something. Yeah, for sure. Funsies. That sounds so. cool. But yeah, chaos pads are fun. Even the effect based ones are neat. Um, well, the, like I say, the X one, I looked at that a lot. For a while. Yeah, well, Savino used to bring a lot of digital. Um, um, he had lots of crack. Cool gadgets. And that uh, is pretty smart, too. I mean, everything, it hooks together with nice little wires. He, he's got like. Yeah, he had a like, I think he had a little mixer, like one of those ones that's like just like all eight quarter eight uh, eighth inch jack mixers or whatever that he had everything wired through yeah it all fits in the recall. Backpack, you know, yeah 
lay it all out and you just got a whole thing happening. It was very, very nice little setup. That's what happens when you live in Toronto. I mean, yeah. And you want to bring a bunch of synths while you bring a bunch of pocket you, toys. You go into a music store though, and they have that kind of stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like that here. I mean, they even get it online, but. Oh yeah. But it's a not... chaos pad, like online. And, uh, it was not cheap. Yep. No, that was some definitely, that was part of, and that's kind of what I was talking about as well as there was kind of like a phase in, and then there was like an overlap when they would come down from Toronto as well, of course, yeah. um, down visiting or whatever, and they come in and it's like, those are special nights. Those are definitely special, special weekends. Lots of stuff that goes on. Because that's when the basement would get really packed. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I remember a few of those nights where it was so packed that we couldn't see each other because your basement was L-shaped like my room. So it was like, because just, like, just like me, I'm behind my furnace. It was the same thing. We would be behind the furnace room. That's good. That was a good space. I mean, it was small, but you know, like you say, you could get 10 people in there. Well, the other thing that I've discovered with this room, the other thing I discovered with this room is acoustically an L-shaped room is actually really good because there's not a lot of standing waves because there's so much, there's so all these different angles. So it actually is really helpful as far as keeping drone down. I mean, I've got a, I've got a bass trap in the corner and that's about it. And what we had kind of de facto was you had those blankets in the one corner and then you had some blankets hanging on the, on the concrete just to kind of muffle yeah. in some parts. But really for the most part, I mean, we didn't have a lot of buildup of bass. It was actually, I mean, I listened to some of those recordings, you know, those EOTR recordings in particular from your basement on, on um, Lake street. And, you know, there was like considering there was no mixing, there was no mixer. It, you know, you were using I think at the time you were using a stereo system as the PA. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I seem to recall it was an old FM transmitter or something. Um, and then uh, some big honking speakers. And considering that's what was being used for the keyboards and the vocals, and the rest of it was basically, you know, Merv would drop his amp, I drop my amp. Those, they sound really good. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Especially yeah. considering, you know, I, at least I wasn't putting a lot of thought into it. I was just like, I'm going to put my amp over here. But we had like, <laughs> it was like, you know, well, it'll fit there. So I guess that'll work. <laughs> it was really... Yeah. At, at some point, that's about when I bought the Zoom recorder too. Yeah. Forget I think Gord High maybe had one first. Maybe it was where I saw one, but it, they were cool. The fact that it records in stereo, it all yep. goes on a like SD card. It's just so easy. Yep. You can make it battery powered if you wanted to. Yeah, and I liked what you were doing as well, where you basically were, you know, you had like boundary mics. And then the mics on the because you were using the other two, just with a you know just with a couple of forty eights or whatever, just you know. Um, yeah, so I had two mono channels and then one stereo channel, right. and uh, usually one of I'd like mic the bass amp. Yeah. And then the other one would be like a. Yeah, like kind of, of a boundary mic that. just to get an extra bit of sound in there. Yeah. And so then, you know, they'd all get EQ'd differently. And then sometimes, depending on what was going on, I'd actually like do a lot of like volume adjustment. Mm -hmm. So we bring like certain channels in for certain parts of stuff. Oh, that's neat. So you're using like a lot of the Reaper automation to uh, into mix between the four channel before between the tracks. Yeah, that's pretty brilliant. Uh, you know, and then the other thing too is like you, with like just drawing camp. them, right? Like I'm just thinking of just like add the points and then shoop, that's 
ducked under, and then I'm going to add the bit here. Yeah, it's just because you just got an envelope, right? Right. Just yeah. Yeah, I've done some of that. Draw it out. So, and it just really it depended on how, like, on the song, right? Like how it mm. came out. The more I liked it, like, the more likely I was to, like, try and sweeten it up a little. Yeah. And then, and then the other thing is sometimes if I really liked it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to touch it at, at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, totally get that. That took, man, I, I spent a lot of time editing those jams. Like, um, minimum of eight hours per jam, you know, but probably closer to 16 or 20. It'd take like, I'd usually spend about four or five evenings doing it. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, it like even. I'd no, I'd spend a lot of Saturday and Sunday doing it. Yeah, for sure. And the thing is, whether you've got, you know, anything more than two, tr well, even with two tracks, even though really you're just mastering, it still ends up being very time consuming. Because you still have to, you know, like you said, sweeten it with EQ and maybe, you know, bring up some volume here, bring some stuff. Down I was here. using Reaper, so I could automate some things. Right. Like I had a couple of like EQ settings that like were saved. Yeah. Because, right? you know, I had the same setup week after week. So you didn't have to like. Yeah. And Reaper's got so much built in. I mean, even without third party plugins, I mean, I have. I I am such a convert to it. I absolutely love Reaper. I mean, it's very good. Uh, yeah, you and you and Dave Rugrock were the two that were using it, and I was just like, oh. And at first, it was like, oh, that's so complicated. And then when it clicked, it was like, oh, okay. Because that's the thing is, it's not because it's so much more modular than something like Pro Tools, eh? It's it's not just like what you see is what you get. I mean, it is what you make of it. So. You can use it as so simply, you can use it as a, a fancy version of Audacity, or you can use it as a fancy version of Logic Pro, whatever you want to make of it, you know, or Cubase. You can make it whatever you want. I, I, I never really got a chance to use Pro Tools because mm -hmm. I was not a Mac user. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, two or three occasions, I was at a computer that had it. Yep. Not a fan. I did not find it very intuitive at all. Like the learning curve was extremely steep. Yeah. yeah. Like I remember sitting down and being like, it took me 15, 20 minutes to like import an audio track. This is, this is too hard. I should know. Yeah. It should be obvious. I should see a thing that says file. And then I should click on it and I should get a thing that says import. And then I should be on my way. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it didn't, Pro Tools wasn't like that for me. Reaper, the, I was used to Cool Edit. Did you ever use that back? In oh yeah. Well, I was a I was a user of Cool Edit, Cool Edit Pro, and then Adobe Audition when it was taken over. And I think yeah. I seem to recall Brock, um, Brock, um, Brock Radio was using that during my stint uh, at their radio commercial yeah. desk. Version of Cool Credit, Cool Edit Two, I think. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that destructive audio I was really used to uh, at the time, um, and then going to non-destructive editing, you know, like you can do with Reaper is um, once you're over the learning curve, and it's like, well, the other thing is, you know, destructive editing was really all you could do when you had a 400 megahertz computer. Uh, it's completely different now. <laughs> it's like add all these plugins, and then sure, you're actually, you know, bouncing your you're playing it in real time uh, instead of just, you know, um, bouncing each, every single change. Stuff. Like I said, that's what I was, when we were talking before, I mentioned like my computer died. Yep. That was the, the big problem is I, I had Reaper on that computer. It worked very well. Mm-hmm. Every computer I've had since, I either the computer was too crap 
to really run Reaper very effectively, or I've been running like Linux and yeah, I haven't been able to. I know it's possible. You run. It runs and... fine. It's just that it, it gets really. What ends up happening with Reaper on Linux, in my experience, is that Jack Audio Connection Kit essentially allows you to have all your plugins right at the OS level. So you end up with, you know, Jack running to get low latency on the kernel. Then you've got Reaper running, and then to get the two of them to play with each other is something else. I, I had exactly the same problem on this computer. And, I, and I, I'm like, you know, the, I ended up using, when I was doing anything in Linux, I would end up just using the, um, the editor that, um, you know, was basically a stripped down version of Ardor instead because it was just such a pain and um, um, like and it works don't get me wrong I mean Reaper works Reaper runs fine on Linux now and it works but I just was like I found okay I've got to go into the Jack Audio Connection Kit route my sound card to it then inside Reaper select that as the actual route in rear route so that I can get to the sound. And then you got to think in your head, well, where am I plugging, plugging this in within Jack? And it's just, if someone was to, to do it like full time, and I know there's like bands that have actually, you know, made a big point about how they're completely DIY. I know there's a couple of punk bands that have produced their albums completely in Linux, but yeah, I mean, I love Linux, but I, there's a lot to be said for just, you know, having Reaper run, with the drivers for either Windows or Mac and then just using it. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. Like I don't want, yeah. I, I just I don't want to sit around I want to sit down and futz. Right? Yeah. Get things to work right. I just kinda of want to have them working because I don't I've got a ton of time right now. Yeah. And that's the problem I have with Linux, with with music and Linux, because like I'm really good with Linux, and but I'll end up spending all my time, you know, optimizing the XT4 um, file system to bring the latency down, and I spend all my time doing all these little things to make this, you know, three-year-old computer act like it's brand spanking new, running really, really efficiently, and I don't do any recording. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go over to the Windows computer and hit record. <laughs> and just end up doing everything in Windows. So I know that's blasphemy. And I work for a software company, but what can I say? It's easier. Pain in the butt, you know, to do it. <laughs> it's just easier to just click. Right. And then I think is the reason why Macs do well these days is really it's so so you don't have any distractions if you're doing you know, something like, you know, in a professional studio environment, you know, I think that at this point they just have the Macs because they know people aren't going to play video games on them. You know, it's like it's set up there. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I, Not Macs, that you can't play video games, but you know what I mean. I always like, you know, I always used like older hand-me-down computers. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Macs, I mean, they... They up, they're always futzing with the OS, right? Yeah. And then, like, if they ever roll out, like, an actual, like, you know, they, they update, update, update. If you're in the update area, you can fix things, right? But once they, like, well, we got a whole new OS out, which they do, like, once a year, it seems like. Yeah, it's what yearly. Are, it is yearly. It's actually like year one is completely new. Year two is like a point, a bug fix release. And they, that's pretty much their cadence. Um, yeah. But uh, I think they're actually planning on releasing 11 for the first time. Yeah, right. And then you're like, but the thing is that half of the time, if you've got a three-year-old Mac, right, and it's running like the wrong operating system, yeah. well, you can up you can upgrade it so far and then maybe the software will work maybe it won't yep yeah it was just too much of a windows never had that problem you'd be running like windows 7 in like 2015 and 
Yeah. Although that's kind of changed because Windows 10 has pretty much the same cadence now. And yeah, I, but Windows I, as home cool. users, we don't really see it as much, but within my day job, it, it is a pain. Like I have customers okay. that have problems with it because of that. Like not, 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 the, the, not having a problem, but it's specifically they'll build out a view image for a uh, horizon image for, you know, um, 1803, but then they get an initiative. They have to go to 1809 and, um, you know, um, Windows is basically following the same kind of cadence now as Linux operating systems, where it's like twice a year, major release, twi you know. Um, but they're all bug fixes, right? Because it's all Windows 10. <laughs> so yeah, it becomes a problem because, you know, it's actually, there's been so many changes incrementally that it's not, you know, a three-year-old install of Windows 10 is actually completely different than a current release, like, current release of Windows 10. And uh, and if you're on the fast stream and it, it's, you know, even you're basically playing with beta software. Um, gotcha. I'm really oh. rambling tonight. Anyway. Did you want to keep talking about the Ear of the Rat stuff? Or? I wanted to ask you about the Space Basement stuff that we did from March to March of 2015. Okay, sure. March 2014 to March 2015. I think that was That's the a weird time for me. I had a lot going on in my personal life at the time. And then the jams were like, like sort of an escape but also like being at dance place was like 50 50 for me mm -hmm. like I, I had a lot going on and then like the jam was just heading in a direction that I wasn't interested in necessarily mm -hmm. and i was lightly miserable anyway so it was just like you know what i mean i just, it just stopped being kind of fun yeah points yeah, like I said, I had stuff going on. I wanted to, and then the other thing too is that the jam took on this whole like it got too much, mm -hmm. right? Uh, just like Christina's take on the whole thing, it was so like loopy, and then. There was a lot of other people that it was, you know what I mean? It taken on like this sort of like really big place in like a whole bunch of people's heads. Yeah. And everybody had their own like ideas about what was going on and what it meant. And like, then, and then, like I say, Christina had this whole like, it was just a, it was just a mess, right? So like I had a real negative association building. Mm -hmm. It just was not good. <laughs> so it's weird. Like, so out of agony and pain, I mean, from a lineup perspective, I think things had kind of snapped back into place. I mean, there's some really solid material here. Time in the time of the signs is going to be premiering next week. And then after that, we're going to be going into um, Star Shining, uh, Category 5, 919, Space Jam Alliance, 816 Fun Vibration. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, mm -hmm. a, a lot of weeks that were, you know, pretty exciting musically. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I know that there was kind of a push and pull and then, you know, 2015 came and uh, Full Spectrum Alliance was formed kind of out of the ashes of this jam. And then Dave went off in that direction and that, and uh, you know, um, there's been some, you know, that, that lineup did gel and we got, I think there's like what, two albums, maybe three. I know Stan who has been working on the, who basically uh, uh, took on the recording after that. 
uh, has got a bunch of songs he wants to release, and I'm and I'm 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 hopeful that it, it'll be nice, um, you know. <laughs> but a lot of that stuff he didn't put online, so you know it's it's really stuff that has been heard on on Bandcamp, and you know, really more of a more of a more of, well, it's Dave's vision is what happened there. That's that's Dave's thing, and and. I'm I'm grateful to have been a part of it, and I'm still part of it. Um, but I just kind of think it's separate from this, you know. Like it really became a different thing, and uh, yeah. and I think well, as it's the, same, it's the same thing as like what Jared did, right? Yeah, it's it it's was a move to a more produ exactly. It was a move to a more serious production, still improvised, but Dave really definitely had a, a, a an idea of what he wanted to do. And that's, you know, um, he talks about it happening automatically, but it didn't, I, I mean, I, I I didn't really consider it happening automatically because, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was involved with, you know, you know, John Bolt and uh, John Penner and, and, and uh, Stan Warren, who were more kind of the principals of that kind of area, Jake, you know, of course, Dan, um, Dave Rugrock, you know, these guys, it's basically like an entire different sphere of people. Merv still uh, involved as well, tangentially, and actually quite seriously for some of the projects. Um, but, you know, he was he was busier, so he wasn't showing up as much. And then there were Dave's friends, then there were like, you know, uh, Johnny's friends that would come around as well. And uh, that's where um, uh, Kevin... Uh, uh, Kevin started doing some stuff as well that is, uh, um, you know, uh, kind of a different kind of thing. But, you know, that there's some more heavier stuff that kind of came out of that. And Kevin's really, um, you know, Kevin's really, you know, that's Kevin Gratton, by the way. Um, I don't think you even know him, but uh, he's one of, you know, one of one of John's friends, uh, Johnny Hart's friends, and um, he's a pretty good buddy of mine now. Um, and you know, he's basically the one who he's, he's basically, you know, the one that, that does most of the emceeing for me and in the current project. Um, but there's definitely more of a metal feel to it. You know, what, what we're doing now because of the current dynamic of that project, it's, you know, it's funny because John Bolt and I are both like shoegaze guitars and then everyone else are like rockers. So it ends up being this really interesting dynamic. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's kind of the reason why I wanted to have a follow-up with you um, is because I look at the year of SB5 as it was really us at the top of the game, right? At the, and it was also the end, you know? Um, yeah. And I think that's kind of, um, I find it kind of fascinating. And, and so I'm, you know, kind of trying to give it a second voice and of course, you know, for respecting um, respecting copy left and making sure that uh, we're uh, crediting crediting you for the production and and linking back to you and um, linking back to archive as well because archive are amazing and uh, you know if you haven't already you people on the internet uh, go support archive org because they're also the home of the wayback machine and the wayback machine is how we know that the world is being written very, you know, being rewritten very 1984 ish. And I don't even mean that in a conspiracy theory way. I mean, just look at the news. Um, and the Wayback Machine is, is where one of those, uh, uh, you know, arbiters of truth that we, we actually have that's completely nonprofit. Uh, so, yeah, there's a plug for that because archives. Yeah, I'm a big awesome. fan of the Internet Archive. Yep. Yeah, pretty. We're recording the internet for crying out loud. I mean, why exactly. We? You know, it's like I think in 1984 where they go back and they're re, you know, they're physically changing back issues of newspapers. That's, you know, the Wayback Machine keeps track of that for us. Yeah. It's, it's important. So uh, hopefully, you know, they stay out of trouble. I don't know. I guess the, do you know anything at all about the lawsuit? I know it ha was happening. I do not. I think it's still like, you know, 
I think it's still in the works. Like those kind of suits take years. I know the archive is still there. And I don't know if it'll like really affect it beyond like uh, their ability to have books on there. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like that's still very much in progress. Uh, there's an article on Vox uh, about it. Cool. But it could hamper uh, the aims of the open internet. So. So I did listen to like a lot of the organism jam. It was good. That yeah. one. Um, there's some, uh, there's a couple of ones on Superbus. Yeah, Superbus is pretty good. Solus Lunai had some great things on there. I like that. Uh, yeah, I, I see what you're saying too, like about SB5 kind of being the end. Like I say, that for me, there's like there's that last jam I posted. Mm -hmm. you know, I did with Chrome. So that's like my. That's putting a bow in it. If that's the last thing I ever end up posting, then it's not too bad. Yeah. Right? Yep. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm actually okay with it. Like that's yeah, it's it's a I really like it. I mean, I had it on I was reading a book, I had it on the other day, and then you know, every like five, ten minutes I'd be looking up like oh, yeah, we did that. Mm -hmm. You know that I don't know. I'm sure you must have gotten that sense. Of, like, sometimes you go back and you listen, and you're like, whoa. Like, one of the best thinking, compliments oh. I ever got over one of the jams was me playing it for Sherry and having her say, that's really good. Who is that? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, oh, it's some, you're the rat stuffer, or, or that's Space Basement, or, or that's Full Spectrum Alliance. And she's like, oh, <laughs> yeah isn't that frustrating oh i've had a few of those experiences where like oh i like this what who is it it's not it's me oh oh <laughs> <laughs> suddenly it's not worth talking about anymore oh well, thanks well there'll never be anything like that again yeah <laughs> Well, like, you know, you and I have talked about this before. I mean, there's a body of work on there. It is on the archive. And unless they get shut down, it'll continue to be on the archive. I think it will continue to be on the archive in, in some form or another. So it'll be fine. And um, yeah, and I'm doing my part to, to get it out to, a, uh, just basically get it out to a wider audience. Uh, with, you know, two or three listens. It's... Uh, it's it's worthwhile. I mean, I'm doing. You know, I really like the. I I like the the cadence of doing it at eight a.m. Eight. It's actually seven forty-five a.m. and seven forty-five p.m. now, but doing it at the eights and just. You know, you get you get two songs a day. What's it going to be? Hmm, maybe something good. Maybe something. What's fun about it is that you know that steady the trip. That's what I'm. That's what I've been aiming to do. I'm trying to stay a good two weeks ahead of everything. So, like, I, like I said, I've already got um, time of the signs is is already uh, in the can. It's already converted over to video and and just waiting on the YouTube page to premiere. And, oh, okay. Uh, so you're uh, you're kind of going in and setting it up like kind of archive page by archive page. What I'm doing is I'm downloading each archive. I'm going to archive. I'm going archive page to archive page, downloading the MP4, MT, downloading the MP3s, then converting them to MP4s with a, um, with the re record cover. And the only thing I'm changing is I'm adding the ugly orange, yellowish, uh, page style that I have to it. So I've just. This one is Space Basement 5, Organism, August 22nd, 2014. But I'm trying to, I, I forgot for one of them, but I do it all in batches. So I'll go and I'll do a page that takes me usually an, an entire Sunday afternoon. And then I'll 
I'll upload them to YouTube on the Space Basement Collective page, and then I'll set them to, you know, drip drip yeah. every day. And so I'm about, I got there, I've got until I think the 21st or 22nd is already queued up. And I'm just trying to stay ahead of it, you know? Yeah, um, well, thanks, man, because I like it. It's, uh, I'm, you know, it's that fun. means a lot to me that you're appreciating it. You know, like, like I, the steady drip too, like, cause you just get little bite sized chunks. Oh, check yeah. this one out. See what it's like. And then oh. that's the other part of it is it's not like, Oh, here's an entire album. It, it really is like, Oh, well I can listen to a three minute song. And YouTube videos are easy to embed places, right? To share different things. Exactly. So. Yeah. That's one so of the other aspects of it. Is, my fancy and yeah. To throw that, it up on Facebook or that's yeah exactly i mean the the reason the other reason with youtube now even though it isn't really video it's become so ubiquitous and the big thing for me to keep it up really was because i was like you know because pandemic i was getting i was bored and um i remember you saying in our last interview like we we talked about how you're like wow that's gonna be a lot of work and yeah but it keeps me busy <laughs> um and there's a lot to go through. I mean, we can go through and, you know, like I said, right now we're, we're breaking in the chunks. So we got May 30th to May 29th, May 30th, 2014 to May 29th, 2015. And then, um, you know, maybe we can look at going back, but I wanted to check with you before I start going back into the EOTR catalog. Um, or if you wanted to do that on the EOTR page instead, I mean, how what would I would, do that? What I would ask is that, because I, I know you're going, you're going to take SB5 all the way to the end, right? Yeah. I think is Black Triangles is the last one. That sounds about right. Yeah. I Although there, posted. Yeah, and then there's a couple of Mervs. I think there's like, I think Merv only did like three or four. So, around that time of the Black Triangles one. Yeah. There's some Ear of the Rat stuff that came out. Yes. And if you could get those out around the same time, rather than, because for this batch anyway, like you're kind of going chronologically. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going chronologically right through. So yeah, if you throw in some of the ear of the rat ones, because they're, the, they're not basically anything that's ear of the rat from the same era is basically sb5 but it's recorded somewhere else right right okay so like yeah because they're above the like they, those are like episode 201 through 203 or something yeah or 205 or but whatever yeah 206 like, the last one is 206 we don't know if that's really the number but <laughs> <laughs> it might actually be the 204th episode, but it's. Yeah, or eight. You never know. Yeah, or or the 208th episode. Who knows? Um, yeah, because. Uh, anyway, I. Yeah, I can definitely do that. If you consider them part of a piece, that that's good feedback that we can keep them together. Because there's quite a bit around that time, actually. There's a bit of, well, it's, and maybe it's better to compare and contrast. Because like I say, I was growing increasingly unhappy with how things were going at Dan's place. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and part of it was like, Yeah, just just things weren't going quite the way I wanted. Yeah, and then the ear of the rat stuff that came out around the same time does more reflect what I was sort of hoping to get out of the jam experience, mm -hmm. both emotionally and musically. Right. So, and then, like I say, uh, the last one. I re I really like it. Oh God, it and it just it's not. 
it's almost it's pretty much perfect <laughs> from start to finish i'm like wow it's and and we've talked about that before actually the the more the nights where it was like two or three of us i think it, it's a lot easier to actually gel and actually get into a more of an ambient groove and i think we talked about that as well like with um that that push and pull uh to you know the heavier side as opposed to more of the uh drone or ambient side yeah uh i mean the stuff i did with tom i i purchased a soir it's like i don't know if you know what those are it's like an electronic it, it's like an indian instrument that's kind of like an accordion mm -hmm somewhere between an accordion and a bagpipe and like like it's droney and i purchased like an electronic one so that really informs like large portions of it okay. just like it's like that drone thing right very nice i really like it um and then the fact that you know like there's no drum kit makes a big difference in terms of what you're going to be getting out of right sound uh and yeah the more rocking numbers are like they're good too uh, but just like you're saying like you get older yep we talked about volume right especially if you're just playing at your house yeah there's no reason to try and blow the doors off right it doesn't make for a better I, recording i'm gonna put this i want to record this right now I have had this idea in my head for about two months now of starting a, starting possibly a cover band called Shoegaze Dad. And it would be basically of, I'm going to cover like dream pop and shoegaze songs and no one will. And the thing is no one will ever come to a bar to see that. <laughs> no one will book someone to do that. But I think that would be like, just like mwah, perfect. That would be like, you know, that would be, just so great and just be like but you know what do you you know no one's gonna go and see some you know 50 year old guy doing stereo lab covers you know <laughs> like, you guys put or, it on youtube or ride covers because one of the things i noticed from watching this the sp5 videos mm -hmm. if i go to like the music tab SB5 is now rolled into like one of the algorithm playlists. Success. Right? That they they set up for you. Oh, you like that, do you? Well, maybe you'll like this. Nice. So I've actually discovered a whole bunch of bands that I think are really cool from YouTube recommending stuff based on the fact that I've been listening to SB5. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. So that's sort of been a you know another fun reason to get the sp5 stuff up on youtube yeah because now youtube is like oh you like that well maybe you like this it's like you know what i i do i do like that so nice that's been cool and then it's funny right like you go like you hit a playlist and then it's like some band i never heard of another one sp5 and another band there's nice. actually a, there's like a i'm dub, so chuffed to hear that that's great there's a dub band called the basement five oh, yeah actually a couple of those came up i didn't good thing we don't have any copyright issues <laughs> yeah they're uh, and they're good like they got some really good tunes I'm nice like, oh, that's cool um i love that when you look up EOTR, there's a recommendation that says people also watch Psychic TV. Yes. Hey. We win. And it's a, yeah, it's um, United 94. Cool. So, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Curse of the inexpensively priced futon. That was a good night. That's from very close to the beginning of Jen's basement. Yes. 
Yeah, and that's one of those ones, actually, that goes to the other thing about the EOTR one stuff, is a lot of the EOTR that's on the main page are the Ustreams, and a lot of the Ustreams from Jen's, the, the first month or so at Jen's at least, uh, when she was on the, when you were on the internet stick, are just like stutterific. Oh, um, yeah. But your recordings on Archiver are just fine. So, I mean, there's definitely an archiving opportunity there of actually like trying to line them up and, um, you know, fix them in post. Oh, the audio's messed up on those? The ones that have audio that are messed up, yeah. Or that the audio is just, you know, being recorded. There were nights as well where the audio was recorded from my webcam instead of through the the wire if you remember we had had that wire set up to to, to the earphone out on the zoom yeah. and of course what that means is you know the zoom it's got such a forgiving hard limiter on it that you can throw anything at it and it'll never peak right that's what's so great about it you just you know you set it down in the room and then you know you'll see it go red for a second and then it just does its magic and you're like oh okay but you know a little hewlett packard microphone on the other hand on a computer <laughs> streaming to the internet <laughs> it's just a mess <laughs> uh, so good. oh that's funny yeah but i mean like that's not all of them i mean there's just a couple of nights where you can really tell well, yeah, and then I think a lot of that Ustream stuff, I know, yeah, Jen's internet was, it was like that weird self, it was basically like a, Yeah, it was a cell phone, it was like 3G, it wasn't even 4, it wasn't even 4. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't even LTE. And then she was over the limit, too. Right, so she was getting like, throttled. Yeah, it just basically shuts it off. Yep. Or something, it was weird, it was getting throttled in a weird way, because... We watch Netflix on that thing too. Yeah. It, and you just have to wait like for a minute every two minutes. Right. <laughs> the show is That's painful. I feel bad about that actually, where it's like fine and then, you know, well, we streamed for three hours. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> I've used up all of her data for the month. <laughs> that's the thing, right? Because it's, uh, I think if you cook the upload limit, yeah. <laughs> it screws up the whole system. Exactly. <laughs> and they're not expecting you to upload like yeah, exactly yeah. like a three hour show every week. Yeah. Exactly. Uh yeah. I uh, the other thing that I did actually is I I put EOTR in the metadata field for the upload. So if you search for EOTR1, it all comes up together. So space basement collective uploads are mixed in with EOTR collective and uh yeah you know SB3. Uploads. Yeah. What's the best you know all the basements had their benefits. Yeah. Carl's space was good. Like they all have the, like the nice upstairs downstairs thing going on, right? Where it's yeah. like jamming it in the basement, socializing on the main floor. Yep. Right, that's nice. Um, Carl's place was pretty good for that. Uh, my place was good that way too. It was nice, especially in the summer, right? We could hang out outside. You know, it was. Yeah, it was good. Jen's place had a. I think of all of them. Well, yours too. Did you have the tent out back? Yep. That was that's nice sitting. Your yeah. The patio situation you have back there. Yeah. Very comfortable. Yeah, and Jen's car that's part the, was pretty good too. Like the the back section of her car, like the, yeah, exactly. the garage, and then kind just, of a back carport thing. Well, you're not you're not on the street. Which is one thing, right? So everyone's hanging out on back. Uh, the other nice thing was that the jam space had a sitting area in it too, right? Yep. So there were, you could 
just go s- sit down and listen. You could go yeah. outside. You know, it was it was very good that way. And also, like, we really heck, you could even go to the toilet without going upstairs because she had the <laughs> she had then, the uh, bachelor toilet in the basement. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All the amenities. It was very <laughs> And I think we we got the lights. I don't know if we ever got the room looking better. Yeah, than we did. I think there. both both uh, her her basement and my basement. My basement. I what I like about the ones from my basement was, especially after Dave brought over the uh, Japanese screens, it looked like a stage when the overhead light was off. I mean, never yes. mind, we were all packed in there like sardines, but it, it, you know, the illusion was there. And what I liked about Jen's was there was that expanse of space. And when Johnny brought his um, um, light show and set that up on the big, um, on the uh, projector screen behind the drum kit, it was like so cool. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was a good. The fog machine got a bit out of hand, though, if I recall. Sometimes it did. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. We had all that Halloween gear. That yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. What? The stu- stupid stitious cat. I'm looking at one of those, and it's got like the the full, uh, you know, um, almost looks like um, Eddie from uh, um, Iron Maiden uh, on the uh, on the screen just like the skull <laughs> so scary scary <laughs> scary <laughs> okay well it's yeah. about midnight <laughs> so i'm going to have to let you go soon no i th- yeah i think we're we're pretty much wrapped up i uh, thank you again for another trip down memory lane uh, that's nice thanks for getting back in touch yeah I'm sorry it was so long i mean it, you know i'm having the same thing I, I went out golfing twice this year i uh, no three times i actually went out golfing three times that's kind of what it's been like uh just I, I think that's kind of part of the pandemic as well is everything's just relentless i mean it's like on the one hand it feels like time is going so slow but then on the other hand it's already october it's like what did i even do because every day is just another day. Yeah, it has been really weird. I mean, not this summer, but the summer before. Mm-hmm. Uh, baby hadn't been born yet, so it was me and my other daughter. Yeah. But like, I had a season pass to Marineland. Mm-hmm. I was awesome. over there like three times a week. Yeah. You know, and like, but I, I was working. I'm just like, I did all this stuff. You know, yeah, I went to work all the time. We were going to Marine Land. We were going on hikes. We were going to the zoo. Yeah, like just all this stuff, right? Yeah, I know. I ran into you like once or twice during that summer as well, and it was like things are going. Things are good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, this summer, yeah, something else. Not, not so much, right? Like I didn't. It's not like I've done nothing. But when I go out, it's you know, I go see my parents or my brother. Yeah. We don't go places. Marine Land was open this year, but uh, still paying full price to go to the park, but and not do not anything. Shows and the rides aren't open. It's like, yep. well, yeah, you know, I'm like I'm gonna pay fifty bucks to go in there and walk around. Yeah, I mean, we we actually did get Zoom uh, Zoo passes, um, although I've only been like twice. I don't know, I went three times. Go, but, you know, uh, the kids have gone. The, yeah, Safari Niagara, or whatever it's called, yeah. yeah. Did that a couple of times. Um, I've been there a bunch. It's pretty good. Yeah, well, it's nice because um, it's the park itself is actually filled out from when since they opened it, so it actually has become a decent zoo. They seem to treat the animals well, and there's a lot of space on the, so you can actually feel safe when you're out there, especially in the newer section in the back. It's wide open, so yeah. even on a busy day, you're not you're not crowded. So I I I don't feel 
like I feel safe when I'm there. I'm okay with it, you know. You can you can, run the, uh, you can stay back. You can stay away from people. Get away from me. The zoo choo choo. Yes, we 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 did that, and they were very good about it's running, and they've been very good about it. Each time, you know, every station's got a place to sanitize, and they're, you know. They're uh -huh. only keeping like every second, it's like every second uh, um, section is being used. So, okay. I mean, I'm sure if you someone coughed at the front of the train, I'm, you know, the John Deere tractor, I should say, really, because it's like a John Deere gator. But yeah, I mean, if someone coughed, I mean, they could get you, but what are you going to do, right? Uh, my phone's about to run out of battery. All right, let's wrap it. Again, thank you, John. I really appreciate your time tonight. And, yeah, good talking to you. Uh, I'll definitely get in, get in touch again soon. Um, Please do. And I will follow up sooner this time instead of later. And maybe not even to record. Maybe I'll just give you a call. We can do that too, you know. Actually, that's just good talk. To me. You know, yeah. so that's what friends do. You know, I'm going to have a lot of free time soon. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks so much right, for joining. Good. You too. Bye-bye.